What's up everyone, Ben Murphy here, and today we are at the Alfa Romeo Fiat, well, Niall Maxwell Alfa Romeo Fiat dealership, and these people are so nice, and if you need an Alfa Romeo or a Fiat, come to this dealership if you're in the Austin area, and I reached out to these people, see if they would let me do this, and they're so nice, they've been so helpful while uh, trying to get this set up, and so here we are today with the Alfa Romeo Giulia, that's what we're gonna be reviewing today, so we'll go around the exterior of the car, then we'll go on the inside, we'll start it up, we'll look under the hood, we'll see what this car is all about, and I'll see you when we get there. All right, so here we are at the front of this Alfa Romeo Giulia, and so the first thing is this classic Alfa Romeo grill right here. Um, we like to call on the channel the Hexa Grill because of the shape, but, and then also the one thing you notice about the front is the headlights. I like the way the headlights look, they add more character to the car, but they also wrap around a lot, like very far to the front on both sides. And if you're looking at this car from the front, and honestly kind of looks like a Tesla, maybe at first glance you could maybe mistake it for a Tesla, I don't know, maybe, maybe you guys aren't seeing that, but I kind of see it looks kind of like a Tesla from the front, but now we're going to move on to the uh, side of the car, talk about design on the side of the car. All right, so now we're on the side of the car, and the first thing we're going to talk about is the rims. These are 19-inch rims. Um, I think they, most Alfa Romeo rims come standard with black, because I've never really seen any non-black, which I really like. The black looks a lot better than uh, just any other color, to, in my opinion. And then, so if we come to the brake calipers, uh, the brake calipers are unique because they have the Alfa Romeo. They've got their, uh, the name on them, which not many uh, car companies have. And then just looking at the rest of the side of the car, it's just your basic kind of standard side of a car, nothing too special here. So with saying that, now we'll move on to the back of the car, look at what's on the back of the car and talk about some trunk space. So I'll see you guys when we get back there. All right, so here we are with the back of the Alfa Romeo Giulia. And before we, uh, before we continue on, this is the Alfa Romeo Giulia the Sport Ti. So this is the highest spec version. This is the most expensive. It's got all the options on it. But uh, so coming down, you got the dual tip exhaust, which we'll hear what that sounds like a little later on. And then one thing I like about the back is you have this kind of diffuser right here. I think this adds a little more character and makes it look more, more aggressive in my opinion. But now we're gonna open up the trunk and see how much trunk space this thing has. So the trunk, it's kind of uh, narrow when trying to put stuff in, but it has 13 cubic feet of trunk space. So how does that compare to other cars in its class, you might, you might ask. So the BMW 330i, which is what we're gonna compare this to, has 17 cubic feet of trunk space. So you might think, well, the BMW is a lot more, but the Audi A4, which is also very similar to this car, only has 12 cubic feet of trunk space. So this falls about right in the middle. And honestly, you can fit a lot in here. You'd be able to fit a bag of golf clubs, some suitcases if you're going to the airport, or a lot of groceries in here. So honestly, I don't see anything wrong with the amount of trunk space you have. I think it's plenty. So uh, now we're gonna hop into the inside of the car and talk about what's new on the inside and uh, about the interior. All right, so what's new for the 2020 Alfa Romeo on the inside? So first thing that we're gonna talk about is the screen. So it's an 8.8 .8 inch touch screen, which is uh, different from last year. Last year you get an 8.8 .8 inch or a 6.5 inch and it was a non touch screen. But this year the 8.8 .8 inch is the only size you can get. And then another thing that's new is the seven inch display between your speedometer and your tachometer. That is new for 2020. You don't have that, you didn't have that last year. And then another, one other thing that's for the radio is that it comes standard with the uh, Sirius XM radio this year. And then another thing that it comes standard with is uh, more uh, connectivity features, including a 4G LT Wi-Fi hotspot. And if we come to the center console, the center console was redesigned, so it looks a lot less cluttered, just not as much stuff on it. I like the way this looks, but it comes with uh, more uh, premium knobs and dials, and then also another thing that's new is this wireless charging pad for your phone which does work we did test it works fine and then it also comes with more driver assistance features and in that includes a semi-autonomous driving mode that you can option on which is kind of like a tesla but not the full thing and then another thing in terms of safety standard features it comes with uh, autonomous like braking and then uh, your collision warning which is new for this year and that's really it now uh, we're going to go over like the full interior and what I like about it. So now we're going to talk about the whole interior and kind of what I like. So the first thing that I really like about this interior is the the burnt orange. I like the color of it. And then the interior is mostly made of uh, fine leather and you have the stitching on the leather as well over here also just all around the car. And then you have this uh, kind of textured metallic finish but you can also get this in a wood finish as well. 
in the cabin just to me this looks really elegant it's a really nice nice setup looks really clean then for the seats the seats are extremely comfortable these are the sport seats and they're really comfortable and they're well bolstered so they really hold you in place it's kind of like sitting on a cloud of leather but and then one thing for the center console is if you come in closer right below the shifter I like this a lot you have the Italian flag right there so just a nice little design right there that they added then if we come to the steering wheel so the steering wheel is really nice um, but you have the start stop button on the steering wheel so instead of over here or down here or somewhere it's on the steering wheel which is actually Ferrari has that as well it's kind of like a Ferrari and then another thing you notice about the steering wheel is these paddles are absolutely massive like you can tell it's a driver focused car because the paddles are so big which I wish some other car companies did that especially for some other car companies sport models but for this fully optioned out sport model you're probably gonna be driving it harder than you would just a normal one because if you're buying a fully optioned out sport model you're gonna be looking for a sportier car so it's nice to have these huge paddles when you're driving it in the manual mode also the speakers in this car are really nice they're uh you can option these on so the speakers that are in this are options but there are 14 speaker system and they are very good they work really well even on half volume it's plenty loud louder than you'll need it to be and if we come over to the screen again the screen offers customization but the uh, the icons are kind of small and maybe be difficult to press while you're driving and then another another thing about the screen is that Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration are both standard on this car but one thing that's a kind of a complaint about the screen is when you're driving and you're using just the normal non Apple CarPlay or Android Auto just navigation it can be kind of slow to navigate especially if you have a lot of turns and if it's slow to navigate it could cause you to miss a turn but a way to fix that is just use the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto integration use that navigation and it's perfectly fine so really no complaints about the interior because the only few complaints that I have can be easily fixed with uh, your phone that you have always on you alright so last thing about the interior of the car is that your driving modes so you got this little knob right here to where you can select your driving modes and one cool thing is that it spells DNA I think that's a really nice detail and these driving modes are not your normal driving modes to where it's just comfort eco and sport you have your dynamic your natural and then your advanced efficiency so you have your advanced efficiency is move this down is your uh, basically your eco mode in any other car then you go up to your natural which is like your comfort mode this is what mode it's in when you start the car up and then you go up to your dynamic which is your sport mode and I really like the way the screen changes whenever you uh, change the driving modes and this selecting the driving mode just feels really good with these with these knobs so that's really it for the interior of the car all right so now we're under the hood of this 2020 Alfa Romeo Giulia and it has a two liter four it's turbocharged two liter four cylinder making 280 horsepower and 306 pound feet of torque it's a rear wheel drive car but all wheel drive is an option and since this car is fully loaded out I'm gonna guess that it has this all wheel drive option on it so the rear wheel drive will do 0 to 60 in 5.7 seconds and the all wheel drive will do 0 to 60 in 5.5 seconds and this car is an 8 speed automatic and how does that performance compare to other cars in its class well the uh, Audi A4 will do 0 to 60 in 5.2 seconds and the BMW 330i will do 0 to 60 in 5.4 seconds so if you have that all wheel drive option it's right in there with those other two cars and then for fuel economy since this is a sedan you're probably wondering what does fuel economy get well it'll do up to 24 miles per gallon in the city and 33 miles per gallon on the highway and that's a really good fuel economy that is a really high numbers for both the city and the highway so now we'll finish up this review and talk about pricing and what it is what how much it costs to buy this car all right so now we're going to talk about pricing so the base model of this car is forty thousand six hundred forty dollars and the TI Sport, which is the top model, which is what we're reviewing today, is $45,640. Then there's a few other models that fall in between that as well, so in that in-between pricing range. But if you come to the Niall Maxwell Alfa Romeo, they offer you a, Niall Maxwell offers $5,000 off, so you can get it for what they call a Maxwell low price. So 
if you take the base MSRP of the car, you knock five grand off of it, that's what their low price is and that's about what the car is. So for this car, you'd be paying about 40,640. Well, I can tell you right here at the sticker, you'd be paying 41,400 for the base price of this car. So if you guys are new, go down below, click that red subscribe button. We are seven subscribers away from 100 subscribers, guys. So if you're new, go down below, click the red subscribe button. And if you've seen multiple of my videos and you're not subscribed, just click that red subscribe button. It takes like two seconds out of your day. It really helps me out. And we're really trying to hit 100. Like I said, we're only seven away. And if you like this video, go down below, click that like button and comment down below what other cars you'd like to see me review. And just like that, I'll see you guys in the next video.